Hey, welcome back to the big board. So let's take a look at Army Group Center from a historical perspective. First of all, uh, I thought what might be interesting to do since I have a few resources in regards to this particular event, uh, <clears throat> the opening uh, surge of Army Group Center in Operation Barbarossa in June of 41. What I've not really had, I've had some books and things on it, but what I've not really had up until now has been a game that, that covered this section or this uh, Army Group Center's you know, primary area of activity, I guess. And uh, I, well, I do have some GMT games. They're massive, and I wanted to, I wanted to feel out the game more from a, a smaller scale perspective first than, than perhaps diving into something at the battalion and... Uh, divisional level. So, uh, Army Group Center, it's a, a Masara, uh, Masahiro Yamazaki game, and I, I probably should just check the scale on here, I was going to mention what the scale was for you. Does it tell me? Maybe it doesn't. Maybe we can guess. It feels like it's a 10 kilometer, 14 game turns doesn't so let's just we'll find it later scale six miles there we go 10 kilometers a hex and uh, each game turn is 12 hours of time so that gives us a, a kind of context for what we're looking at and I thought I you know I like some of these older books that have uh, little color maps and pictorials that allow us to get a sense of the game and what happened on uh, happened historically so I thought we'd just take a look at this uh, I think it's World War Two, yeah, Encyclopedia of World War Two. It's just the Cavendish, uh, the Marshall Cavendish set. Uh, you know, lots more research and, and bits and pieces have come out since then. Uh, but we've got a little backup with Glance, so we can have a look at what Glance had to say. This may end up being one video or two. We'll see how uh, how tedious it gets. All right. Uh, <clears throat> this obviously digs into all the different forces that are arrayed against each other and each side and I don't think we need to go into too much detail on all of that. Uh, I've got a book over here called Hitler's Generals and I'd like to have a look at each of the generals on the German side at the very least to try and get a bit of a profile on them. And you know some nice uh, some nice photographs here. I think those are uh, look like look like 150 millimeter guns maybe 120s I don't know but here's the opening situation that, that I thought might be most of interest to us and well, then we'll have a look at it on the map and see if we can't uh, get uh, get acquainted so we have in the north Panzer Group 3 uh, 9th Army uh, the 4th Army of Cluj and then uh, Guderian's Panzer Group 2 and then 6th Army is also on the map I believe uh, maybe not no, they're not. Okay, and so that that's Box Army Group Center, for want of a better title. And 3rd Army, 10th Army, and... Uh, oh, it's got 10th Army in here twice. Well, that's and that's a mistake, because it's 3rd, 4th, and 10th Armies. And then 13th Army is, is situated back a little ways, uh, just to the back over here somewhere, based on this map. So I'm going to show you now. So this is... Let's pick up, there's Minsk, which is one of the objectives of Army Group Center's opening drive. And there's Kobrin, Biatosk, and Lida. And we'll try and find those three or four places, and we'll use those as a reference point over here on the map. Okay, so let's get over on the map. So, to start with, Minsk. Ooh, um, let me zoom out a little bit. I zoomed in too much. Minsk is here. The opening set of. Let's move this away. <clears throat> the opening set of uh, uh, defenses, entrenchments, are all along here. In which, in, as you can see, most of it is is not uh, protected. Right? There's not. It's not. Uh, there are no units, but you're just paying extra movement points to move through here. Uh, you've got Brest down here on the, the southern portion of the map. And what did I say we were looking for? Here's Grodno. 
maybe we'll get some narrative uh, from the book. Uh, Glance's book. Ballastock is here. Was that on the map? Yes, it's spelled differently, but yes, Ballastock is here. <coughs> so Ballastock to Minsk. We've got that that section covered there. And I was also looking for Cobran. We're trying to find Cobran, which may have a different name. God, some of these characters, some of these counters are just hacked. Here's Cobran down here. Just here. Okay. Right there. So you can see that's the area of operations we're going to be working in. This is the edge of the marshes here. So that's all pretty interesting stuff and you've got the forces are arrayed <clears throat> I'll go by division here because I don't have the chart out in front of me but we've basically got uh, the 39th Panzer Army 57th 20th and 5th all up here and 8th as well and then down here, we have 43rd, and these are units from both 9th Army and the uh, and, and Guderians, uh, what are they, 2nd second, second, uh, Panzer Group, and the 3rd is up north. But we've got th uh, 43rd, 24th Panzer, 47th Panzer, 12th, uh, 12th Army, and there's another dude here somewhere, 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 9th Army here as well. So that gives you a, a feel for where the forces are arrayed. So I guess on the opening drive, let's see, let's have a look and see what happened. And, uh, and in the next set of videos I, I do, I'll, I'll walk us through uh, the, 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 ver the mechanics for the game so that you'll understand what all these DIS and PO counters are. Uh, don't freak out about those just yet. All right, uh, <clears throat> so in general, in most of the regions, uh, the, the Wehrmacht uh, ground, ground advance encountered weak and patchy resistances from Glantz. Uh, they overran the border posts before the NK, NKVD border guards could assemble. Um, Germany did all in their power to disrupt the Red Army. Even before the initial airstrikes, the Brandenburger Special Operations troops were in Red Army uniforms parachuted in, infiltrated, and did all sorts of nifty things. Operations in the Belarusa, which is this area here, uh, no more was the destruction more apparent in total than in the northern sector of the Prepet Marshes, where the Wehrmacht was making its main attack. Uh, Field Marshal Fedor von Box, Army Group Center. The Army Group's initial mission was to penetrate the Soviet defenses of the Belostok salient, which is here. Uh, advance along the minsk slomensk axis. So that's going to be, here's Vil Vilnius. Let's turn the camera a little bit. Vilnius, Minsk, to your right, just off camera. Let me use a pencil. Just off camera, just there. Okay. So basically, uh, uh, encircle and destroy all the forces uh, to the west of the Dumper River, which is over here on the right-hand side of the map. It's actually going to be off-map, I think. I have not double-checked that. I'm pretty sure. All the rivers are the same size here. So there's no delineation between major, like between s streams and rivers. Yeah, Dumper's off. This is the Berenzina River on the far right-hand side of the map. And the Berenzina is to the west of Dempa River, I believe. And I know that only because we just played Red Army and we were, we were doing this in the other direction, having the, the Germans uh, take the beating. All right, uh, let's see. And then it was to achieve the prerequisites of, uh, for Army Group Center was to be able to link up with Army Group North at that point. Uh, with the objective of destroying enemy forces in the Baltic region and proceeding to Moscow. I'm not going to read the huge uh, two-page list of the opposing forces and of the uh, forces that are involved, but because we just went through all those. Uh, besides the sheer force and the speed of the vastly superior German forces advanced, the greatest difficulty the Soviet defenders experienced was a lack of virtually any information about the current situation at the front. 
The reality was far worse than anyone in Moscow believed, resulting in a series of impossible orders to counterattack, etc., etc. I think we all knew that. Uh, yes, faced with the box onslaught, Pavlov's uh, front suffered immediate paralysis of command and control, and uh, the headquarters of Korobokov's 4th Army was never able to establish reliable communications with the headquarters above and below it. Uh, and that and command is going to factor into this game here as well, so that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. All right, uh, so there were some general counterattacks. Uh, Bolden and Pavlov uh, attempted to make some counterattacks that were thoroughly smashed. Uh, June 22nd in the evening, Stalin and Timoshenko issued the uh, directive number three from the NKO, um, and that was basically saying, uh, you know, advance and attack, etc. Except there were no units left. Uh, Army Group Center's flank, Hoth's third Panzer Group struck eastward along the vulnerable boundary line between the northwestern and western fronts. I think the western front is where the 10th Army was allocated. Easily outflanking the latter's, oh, there you go, I was wrong, the latter's third army and reached Vilnius by the evening of 23rd June up here. Uh, although badly rattled, uh, 24th June Pavlov uh, uh, once again attempted to organize a counteroffensive during this uh, under his deputy Bolden. He assigned Bolden normal control of the 6th and 11th mechanized and 6th cavalry corps, which is going to be. 21st Rifle, what are we looking for? 11th Mech and 6th Cav, I saw 6th Cav here somewhere. They may have been further over on the right hand side. Well, I want Dilly Dally trying to find it. Some of the forces are actually quite spread out. Uh, here's 6th Cav here, actually, right there. And the 11th, uh, that's 11th Motorized Division there. So they were, they were rallied to uh, Counterattack. <clears throat> Attack north towards Grodno, which is in this direction right here. There's Grodno right there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Lacking logistics and air cover and communications and sufficient modern tanks. Doomed from the start. Everybody dies. Hoth's Panzer Group race past Vilnius towards Minsk on the Western Front's northern flank. And at the same time, Guderian's 2nd Panzer Group penetrated Soviet defenses south of Brest and advanced precipitously toward Minsk on uh, Pavlov's southern flank. Pavlov had no choice but to pull back. He was in no position to do so in an orderly fashion, primarily because a lot of the bridges were blown by German air and a lot of forces were left behind and or encircled. Uh, there were some fairly uh, frantic and uh, terrorized messages back to HQ for the uh, Soviets claiming up to a thousand tanks uh, were being used just to attack Minsk. Uh, he ordered uh, 20th Mech and 4th Airborne Corps, which is probably these guys over here. That's the airborne force there. They were ordered to attack. That worked out horribly. In 18 days of combat, which goes beyond the, uh, what is this, beyond the scope of this game, in 18 days of combat, German Army Group Center advanced 360 miles, occupied all of Belarus, and inflicted 400,000 casualties on the Western Front, including 341 killed, captured, or missing. In addition, the Western Front lost. Yeah, 5,000 tanks, 9,400 guns, a bunch of mortars, 2,000 aircraft, 1,700 aircraft. However, despite dramatic success... Whoa, the camera fell. Let's see. Sometimes this gets a little overweight. Maybe I'm overweight, who knows. I'm gonna bend this leg down a little bit. I've got this new flexible camera leg tripod. It's better than the old one. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Where were we? 18 days of combat, losses. There were flaws in the German victory because the advancing Germans were not able to assemble the forces necessary to seal off the encircled Red Army forces. Hermetically, large numbers of Red Army soldiers escaped, leaving heavy, heavy equipment behind. Afraid that his panzer groups would advance too far too fast, Hitler ordered them to pause while his infantry eliminated the encircled enemy. This hesitation, in turn, prompted the first of many debates that would ensue in the German command channels. Yada, 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 you know your history and you know all that. Uh, Guderian, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, 
The prescient uh, Helder also noted that many Red Army troops were fighting to the death and that German intelligence was incorrectly identifying many of the large Red Army formations. All of this boded ill for the future. So I think that's a great place to stop um, and give that a 15-minute uh, slice of pie for you. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna talk. Let's talk about generals at some other point. Maybe we'll do that live or just chit chat. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is finish allocating orders to the German forces, and try not to vomit as I look at some of the clipping on these counters. And we will then, I will roll through a turn, take some pics, and post something up. And we'll, we'll come back and maybe do some live play sometime this weekend. Right now, I'm going to go off and catch up with a couple of buddies and talk about war games. Catch you later.